Hey, Dr. Dana Miller. Hi, Taylor. How are you? I'm doing pretty good. Doing great. Why don't you introduce yourself and explain where we are? Uh, my name is Dr. Joseph Dana Miller. I'm the Assistant Academic Dean with the Whitaker College of Engineering. And right now we're in front of our Maddox Endowed Research Center, which is a research dedicated facility for several of our professors and uh, lots of our grad students. And we're also at the top of the engineering key. And why don't you tell us a little bit more about the college? Uh, so our college currently has about 130 professors, 900 graduate students, 4,200 undergraduate students. Um, our faculty brings in about $18 million a year. Um, and we offer smattering of degrees across all 10 of these buildings. So how many different degrees do you offer? Uh, so we offer 10 different degrees in seven different departments. Can you minor in an engineering program while majoring in a different area? Yeah, absolutely. So we understand that a lot of students that come to Texas Tech in the college and outside of the college come and may not know exactly what they want to do. So our counselors will work with all of the students so that while they're focusing on their major of practice, they can minor in a field of engineering. Awesome. So what do you think makes students want to study engineering? Great question. So right now, we just lived through 14 of the hardest months that most of us will ever have to live through. And one of the nice things about being in a field of engineering is that it is a very, very resilient field, which means that the number of jobs lost in the engineering disciplines during COVID was not as great as other professional disciplines. So what if a student doesn't know what kind of engineering they want to study? Oh, that's fine. So we just redid our common first year. And for our common first year, all of our students, whether they're studying environmental or civil, petroleum, mechanical, or any of our 10 disciplines, they're going to be enrolled in the same set of classes their first fall and spring while they're here. And that way they can get to know everything they need to about our students, our student organizations, our faculty, our research opportunities. And at the end of that nine months, they can make a more informed decision about how they would like to invest in the next three years of their life. Okay, and what classes are in that common first year? So the first is a computational thinking with data science course, which walks our students through the science of algorithms and how to, to, to problem solve. The second class is a bio-inspired design course. This is a class that has all of our students take a look at how engineers can use things that have happened in the biological world as proxies for solutions in the man-made world. And then the third is a social technical thinking class, which has our students examine right and wrong, good and bad, um, because engineers are a part of the society that they're in. And so, our engineers need to maintain the public trust in the same way that we trust that our doctors, when they tell us something's wrong with us and we should take medicine, that that isn't going to hurt us. Most people in a society don't know what engineers do, so it's important for our, our graduates to have a good understanding of good and bad, right and wrong, to maintain that public trust. That's awesome. So how big are engineering classes? So here in the College of Engineering, we have a self-imposed headcount of 49 students. Most of our first and second year classes are no bigger than 35, and most of our third and fourth year classes are no bigger than 25. But while you're here, you'll never be in an engineering class with more than 48 other people. Is there an engineering honors program? There is. We work very closely with the honors uh, college. So we have honors classes available to students in every one of our disciplines. We have uh, also have some dedicated research classes targeted only towards our honors students so that they can have a good understanding of how undergraduate research works because a lot of our, under, our honors students choose to stay here and pursue master's degrees. So can students go straight from a bachelor's to a master's in engineering? Yeah, so in all 10 of our, our programs, a student can just go straight to a master's. You will get your pass through bachelor's, but the way it works is this. Given current market conditions, economically, the best return on investment is to graduate with a master's. And so what we've allowed our students to do is double count as both credit towards their bachelor's degree and their master's degree, three or four of their junior and senior level electives. And that way they spend less money to finish with that master's degree. And that's not a, a situation that anyone coming in would have to know that they wanted to pursue. We're talking about junior and senior level classes. So you would work with one of our advisors at the start of your junior year if that was something that you were interested in. That's super smart. So what kind of services do you provide for students to be successful? So we have our academic services, our student services, our career services, and we also have a professional partnership with ConocoPhillips to provide mentoring and outreach and engagement. Are there student orgs within the College of Engineering? Yeah, so currently we have 34 student organizations and nine honor societies. Um, the 34 student organizations are tied to all seven of our departments and all 10 of our degree programs. So why is it important for students to become a part of student orgs? So it's very important for our students to become a part of a student organization. As a matter of fact, we recommend that they become a part of many. Because I said a little while back that our common first year allowed our students some time to learn. Well, if you 
attend those student organization meetings, it's important to, to note that one of the things they do is once a month, they bring somebody in from the outside that is a recent alumni, who is a practicing engineer, and they will talk to the students about when I was in school, what did I do? What did I see? What do I wish I'd have done differently? What do I do now? So it provides that perspective. But the second thing it does is it allows our students to engage with other students that are already in the department that they're choosing to pursue a degree in. And all of our, our uh, engineering student organizations, can, or they, they compete in some sort of uh, national level competition. So they start off competing at the state level and then the national level. Examples are, we have a group in civil engineering that builds a concrete canoe and then races it on open water. We have a group in mechanical engineering that builds a rocket that goes out up to about 4,000 feet. We have a group in uh, mechanical engineering that builds an F1 car and then takes it to Dearborn, Michigan and races it against other schools. We have chemical cars, we have our hackathons, we have lots of different competitions. So we really do urge our students to become a part of those student works. So be honest, how hard are engineering classes? Like how many students continue into their second year? So engineering classes are a little bit more rigorous than some of the other majors, but I will again go back to that. It's a very resilient field, right? When economic terms or times get tough, engineers do tend to keep their jobs. But also um, we're very proud of our retention rate here in the College of Engineering. 88% of our students make it from first year to second year. And so we attribute that to our entrance requirements and also all of those student services that I talked a little bit about, but outreach engagement, uh, engagement, mentoring, tutoring, scholarships, all of these things help our students be very successful. And how does the college help students that are looking for a job? So as far as our career services group, our career services is, uh, group is led by a woman named Lori Elder who comes out of industry. She used to be a headhunter. She used to look for students who were the most attractive as candidates to make the company as best it could be during the hiring process. We've now hired her to flip that. Uh, she now leads a team that helps our students become the most attractive candidates they can be when seeking a job. So we offer resume workshops, interview workshops. Uh, an interview is after all just a game. Everything in life is. You wanna win the game based on the rules. So you have to understand those rules so that when you're asked pat questions like, what would you say is your biggest weakness? You have a canned answer ready and you're not going to just be caught off guard. Does the college have a job fair? Yeah, so we throw two of the largest job fairs in the state of Texas. Uh, in the fall, it's 350 companies, and in the spring, it's about 250 companies, but it depends on market conditions and the price of a barrel of oil. That's awesome. What's the most unique thing about the college? Uh, the most unique thing about the Whitaker College of Engineering is our international requirement. We are the only public institution in the United States that offers engineering programs that requires our students to travel internationally. Um, this was a grand vision of our dean, and it's because he wants our students to graduate, understanding that they are members of a global society. Um, given the times we've all just lived through, it's not hard to understand that what we do in the U.S. affects other countries and what other countries do affects us. So this was something we've had in place for a long time. It's also important to note that given COVID and the pandemic, we are uh, very cognizant of safety in travel. So starting last spring and then summer and fall and spring, and actually this summer, we've canceled all of our travel programs for the safety of our students. Um, those programs, you know, we use the word hope a lot. We hope that those programs will spin back up pretty soon, but that's, you know, pandemic permitting. All right. And what do you use all of this grass area for? Ah, so this beautiful space. So this is our 10 buildings housing our seven departments and many research centers. This is the engineering key. And this giant grass space in the middle is the center of life for several different activities here at Texas Tech. Number one is at the beginning of each fall semester, we have an engineering kickoff event where we have games and free food and you can come out and meet your professors and all of the student organizations are in a tent. Um, we have things like pie your professor in the face. We have the giant hamster ball races. We have where you wear a bungee cord and run and get snapped back and not my thing, but whatever. Um, down there, there's usually like a giant laser tag course that we put up, a giant inflatable field. Um, but the second thing is uh, game days. So every single game day, this becomes kind of the center point of tailgating at Texas Tech. Uh, there are about a dozen tents, um, probably close to 10,000 people out here uh, enjoying all of the pregame festivities. Texas Tech is, after all, a very big athletics town. Football is a big one. So this space just becomes the center of all, of all life on campus. Well, thank you for your time today, Dr. Dana Miller. What's one final thought that you want to leave us with? So the last thing that I want to leave you with is this. We've all just gone through some very, very tough times. We have a very large dedicated staff that is interested in helping all of our students, catering to all of their needs. Um, we're looking forward to seeing everybody back on campus. You know, we all had to transition to going home and then coming back. 
um, but the opportunities here abound. We are ready to hear, ready to help you with everything you need. And we look forward to seeing all of you as soon as we possibly can. All right. Thanks so much. Absolutely. Have a great day, Taylor.